I had nobody to talk to. Um, I hadn't been out long enough to make any real friends. Uh, so, like I said, I had nobody to talk to. So the, the weight of the uh, PTSD, the weight of the nightmares, the weight of, you know, just being out of the military for a year, for, you know, for all those years I was in the military, everything was safe. I knew where my next check was coming from. I knew my family was going to be supported. I, you know, I, I knew everything. Um, when you get out, you don't know anything. You know, uh, you get a job, hopefully, um, and you work hard at that job in order to support your family. But, uh, you know, anything can happen at any time and you're out there on your own. So there's a lot of stress there, uh, just getting out of the military and then having to support your family. Um, so yeah, all of that stress together, uh, compounded by having nobody to talk to, to share all this with, uh, you know, resulted in my, you know, committing suicide. I don't think that people with trauma have the same skill set or tool set to, to get through it. And Matt, Matt was a tricky one, maybe, or maybe it's more common than I realized, but he appeared to have every tool available to him to um, to heal and to, I mean, he could figure anything out except for himself. So you have to lower that expectation. If someone's got trauma in their lives, they don't have the same coping skills to resolve that, that people who didn't grow up with trauma. And I do think it would, <clears throat> I think it would have helped him to have talked to someone that, you know, had understood what he was going through, had also been in combat, but for him, uh, because he had such an image to maintain because of his position, I don't know that he would have been super comfortable talking to someone that he um, knew super well about um, some of the really deep-rooted trauma that he had been through. So we went through a pretty quick divorce when I got back, probably within six months, and I was lost. Didn't know where I was going, I didn't know anybody. Um, <clears throat> it was just, it was hard to integrate back in society being in a complete foreign state to you and I met the wrong people started using drugs um, kind of taking my pain away forgetting about my problems and my issues and I went to the VA I had been through rehab probably five or six times and everything was being pushed with me for pills and I knew something there's something better I just that wasn't working for me so what what else can we do and it got to the point where I was about to take my life um, didn't know where I was going I said you know what I'm not seeing my kids my family hates me why am I even here what am I doing and I don't think Matt felt comfortable um, admitting that he was struggling and that he had weaknesses because it was almost like everything just accumulated. The more that he achieved and people saw that he did well, um, it elevated him. You know, they expected more, they gave him more opportunity and he readily took it, but it just, it created this mismatch in him of knowing he was struggling, but yet the responsibility just got bigger and bigger. And I don't know that he ever felt like he could tell anybody that. Prior to going to combat, you really don't know what to expect. You can't prepare for combat. Um, you can train all you want, and that training sticks with you. But mentally, you you can't prepare. Uh, spiritually, you can't prepare for combat um, until you just get there and you let your training kick in and, and you do what you've been trained to do. But as as all combat veterans have discovered. Um, it's much more than you think it is when you're going through it. Um, I, I tell my, my boys that uh, no one wins a war. Um, there's, not been a, there's never been a single war that's been won by either side. Um, and they all never end. Um, it's so easy to you know, go to combat, um, not knowing, naive, um, and just do what you've been trained to do. But you know, the hard part's coming home. Veterans PTSD, it's unending. Um, like I said, I've, I've suffered with nightmares since I was 20 years old. 
that results in sleep deprivation. I am in a constant state of sleep deprivation. That, and then you put on the stresses of the day, and then you put on, you know, the the major events in life, such as, like I said, uh, losing a parent, losing a sibling, losing battle buddies, you know. Um, those stresses piled on top of the normal stresses that you feel every day, on top of the sleep deprivation, it can get overwhelming for veterans. And veterans can help each other. We can heal each other. Just, uh, just reach out. They don't have someone next to them or be able to communicate with that and say, I understand. Um, and that, that is paramount. To be able to, um, to talk to somebody and know that they've been through something very similar to what you've been through. They've lost a fellow soldier. Um, their commander was blown up by a vehicle-borne IED. They, they went through combat just like you had been through combat. When you can say, I understand, that's huge. But there truly is not a second of the day that goes by, I would say, that we don't think about um, him or how he died. Um, and that is a really, really hard thing to um, try and live with. Um, also because we just miss him, we miss him a lot. And um, I think that's important for people to know when they're considering suicide is that that pain for the people that love you is truly unimaginable. And it's not to say that they should feel to guilt someone into not um, committing suicide, but um, rather just to know that people love you that much that your absence would, would do that. My name is uh, Blake Leach, and I'm the Chief Operations Officer of an organization called The Warrior's Journey. We are a veterans organization that's here to help anyone who's ever served their country. And if they've raised their right hand to protect and defend the Constitution of the United States, we're here to help. We're here to help them with any life issues, identity, um, depression, uh, deep loss, um, and their family members. We, we know that there are a lot of family members out there that fall right in with them that need that help because they don't understand what their spouse is going through, what their dad's going through, what their son's going through. Reach out to us, whether you're that family member or whether you're that veteran or you're, you're still in the military. What we do is we offer 100% confidential help that we meet you where you are, we connect you one-on-one -on -one with another warrior that has been through what you've been through and can say, I understand. And if you, if you need a, to go to our website, thewarriorsjourney.org, twj.org, or you can simply text us at 213-TWJ-HELP. And that will go instantly to one of our connectors that will reach out to you and meet you where you are to help you through this life issue that may seem like there's no solution but we'll help you find it and help you understand that you can be happy again and you can live a full life. We can fix it. We can stop veteran suicide. I know we can. And veterans, be there for each other. Uh, just the simple fact of being there and listening to each other and just talking with each other. If we did that, if veterans just did that, I know we can eliminate veteran suicide. I know we can. I'm Missouri House Veterans Chairman Dave Griffith. We appreciate you and your service. And we want you to know that if you need help, you're not alone. And there are other veterans who are out there to help you. Whether it's for yourself or someone else, please reach out. Call 988 or visit Missouri988.org.